It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here on our new day, our new time, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1900 UTC, to talk about the latest from Windows, the latest CEO speculation, new PCs at CES, and a whole lot more. You stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 344, recorded January 8th, 2014. Is there any corn? Windows Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to upgrade your IT skills or prepare for certification? IT Pro TV offers engaging, informative tutorials streamed to your Roku, computer, or mobile device. For 50% off the lifetime of your account, go to itpro.tv slash WW and use the code WW50. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers the uh, latest news from Microsoft. Big Green, as they're known colloquially by no one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. We were talking before the show. Who 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 has the uh, Ford is the Blue Oval, you were saying. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, in fact, that's Scott Monty, who's their social media guy, says that internally sometimes they talk about polishing the Blue Oval. Yeah. <laughs> It's they sad. hawked the blue oval. Uh, that was one of Alan Mulally's first moves. Remember, hawking the blue oval. Yeah, they put it up against. Um, they put it up for credit so that they could avoid. Oh uh, wow! Avoid federal receivership. Smart move. Didn't have to take TARP yeah. funds or whatever it is the auto industry got. That's Paul Therott from the super site for Windows WindowsWinSuperSite.com, and Mary Jo Foley from AllAboutMicrosoft.com, and we are here on our new time. If you're watching, then I guess you figured it out. If you're watching after the fact, bereft because nobody showed up Thursday, we've moved to Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC, so that Leo, whoever that is, some guy named Leo gets two days <laughs> off a week. Steve Gibson said, what are you going to do with two days off a week? I said, mm -hmm. it's called a weekend, Steve. <laughs> Maybe you've yeah, heard right. of it. <laughs> it's called normal. Self-employed yeah. people don't understand the concept of time off. Because you're always working, right? Yeah. And in fact, Lisa's immediately said, great, we'll have more of you on Thursday and Friday for doing stuff. We can do uh, meetings. <laughs> no, I'm going home. Wow. I'm going to sit in my boxer shorts and play sure, there's Xbox. stuff around the house that needs to be done, yeah. Leo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there always is. So hello, everybody. Um, did you have a nice New Year? Thank you for being here New Year's Day. That was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Very grateful. I guess yeah, we saw you the next day. Yep, you so, did. You got to see us right a blur. after. It yeah. is a blur. Yeah. Um, but I'll repeat it for those who didn't. It, you, Paul and Mary Jo were great. Mary Jo did later on a beer tasting, which we're now getting those up, by the way. We're doing uh, oh, nice. so, so a couple of things we're doing um, on our Inside Twit YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Inside Twit. We're putting each hour up by itself. We realize you can't put a 24-hour video mm -hmm. up. Right. So right. each hour by itself. But then we're going to, uh, in our Twit specials feed, do things like Mary Jo Foley uh, drinking beer. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Paul Therott killing me in combat. Things, <laughs> things like that. Our top story, of course, this is CES week. It'd be crazy not to talk about CES. Everybody else seems to be. Uh, is there a Windows angle, though? Surprisingly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, Intel's there. Intel always shows concept stuff, right? In fact, I like Microsoft that. Microsoft has a, a big online presence about CES. Wait I mean, a minute. Yeah. They're not there. I know, but if you, you know, if you just follow them online, like I've been doing, yeah. it seems like they're there. Isn't that interesting yeah. that they didn't want to be there? They, they gave up their there. booth. <laughs> they used to have, for years, they had the booth across the uh, aisle from uh, Intel. They had that first booth that you walked in that, uh, what was it, the, the South North Hall or the North, South Hall? Yeah, I can't remember. Whatever the initial hall, the big hall, the main hall. Yeah. Right there, Microsoft. That was them. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and now it's Hisense, the big uh, Chinese TV company. By the way, I'm we're sure doing a deal crazy. with Hisense. <laughs> really? I'm very proud to say. Uh, I think they announced that they're going to have a Roku TV, you know, with built-in oh. Roku. 
and I think their uh, Twit will be one of the uh, channels. Uh, we're on Roku already, but I think on the new High Sense. They're like the KTEL of China. <laughs> well, you know what it is. It, I think everybody looks at Samsung and LG, which used to be Lucky Gold LG? Star. LG. 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 <laughs> They look oh, at these Korean companies, which were really the back of the supermarket TV sets. Yeah. And at one point, they just said, no, we don't want to be that. We want to be Sony. And they killed Sony. And I think the Chinese companies, Hisense and TLC, or TCL, rather, are looking at Samsung and LG saying, we can do that. Mm -hmm. We make the dang things anyway. So um, That's what Asus did in the PC market. Did they? Yeah. Because they, yeah, were, the they were a motherboard studio. manufacturer for a long time, right? Yeah. Well, they used to come up with the designs. I mean, I, I all the early Dell laptops were, were all actually oh, that's Asus interesting. And other ODMs, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, I think a lot of people didn't know that the early Apple laptops were all Sony. Yeah, Sony designed. Right. It's not unusual. Mm -hmm. So, what does Microsoft say about CES? Well, they've been blogging a lot about it on the Windows blog. Um, they've been talking about all the new hardware that's coming out. Finally. The Windows 8 hardware. Yeah. yeah. Just a couple of years later than yeah, really? a lot of us it, thought it would. <laughs> Windows C devices announced at CES. There's Let's lots see. of them. There's lots of them. Wow, you're right. They're, they're really acting as if they're like... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is I mean, like, a lot of them are very odd, but there's some Well, look really at this one. What is this giant thing the guy's holding here? <laughs> Let's check. Oh. I believe that's one of those 22-inch or 20... Yeah. 22 inch like uh, it's a know, Panasonic tough, tough pad. Yeah. Yeah, it better be tough because if you're walking around <laughs> yeah. it, people are going to beat you up. Hey, throw me that PC for a second, <laughs> would you? But it is 4K. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. There's another 4K one. Toshiba announced uh, a 4K laptop. Yep. That might be it right there. No, this is the yep. Toshiba Tecra W50, a powerhouse. Um, there's a satellite. Here's a Vio Fit. We're looking at the you Microsoft to, Flickr stream, Microsoft. which cracks me up. <laughs> There's it's another that tough, tough pad. ruggedized How, how much do you think one? Microsoft spent going to CES every year? Well, I know the booth alone has got to be more than a million bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so somebody was probably doing the math and said, you know, we could blog about this like we're there. <laughs> and <laughs> Same benefit. As far as people who visit us on the web go, it's the right. same thing. No, but I, they are uh, there, too. We shouldn't say they're not yeah, there. They're there in suites, in booths. Where are they? Yeah, Julie Larson Green's there and Panos Panay, who had surfaces there. So they're there, and they're meeting with people yeah. privately and, yeah, like private back yeah, That's how companies meeting. do it nowadays. Yeah. And we stopped going to CES for very much the same reason. It didn't cost us a million and a half bucks for a booth, but uh, mm -hmm. it's very expensive to have oh, a presence at CES. So we just send reporters down. It's very similar coverage. Yeah. We're just not sitting there, you know. This is cool. This is the... Origin PC Genesis and Millennium. Uh, it's kind of got a neat... Well, it's a case. Actually, you know, see, I get suckered. I shouldn't get suckered. Because <laughs> inside, it's the same as anything else, right? Every PC gaming case from the past 30 years has been designed like the alien from Aliens. Right. You know, it's Okay, got we have to talk of, about that one. The one that's on the yes. screen right now. This is, But this is not new. The ThinkPad X1. Oh, it is yeah. new, though. There Why? is a new one. And finally, a real laptop. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean by real? This is it's the Lenovo laptop. ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Right. right. It's not one of these weird hybrid, rip the screen off, rip the keyboard off. It's actually a clamshell. Wait a minute. Laptop. There's no Android? What good is that? <laughs> I know, exactly. No Android. Wait, this isn't yeah. a Chromebook? Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, um, this looks like it's 16.9. It's hard to tell from the uh, the picture. Paul knows a lot about this. One. I yeah, like. It's, it's, I think uh, this is it's the super high res. Okay, you know, that's 20, I want to say it's twenty five sixty by. I don't remember the other one. Fourteen hundred something like that. See, that's one thing uh, that early uh, Windows eight uh, cheapos were thirteen sixty eight by seven thirteen sixty by seven sixty eight yeah. or whatever. That was terrible. Or the eight inches, which are twelve eighty by eight hundred, which is even worse. Yeah. Um. Not not to get off track here, but uh, they also have a ThinkPad mini tablet, which looks just like their. Well, it looks a lot like their uh, Lenovo Mix. Two, I think it's called, the 8-inch version. And so, you know, the ThinkPad version of that has a 1920 by 1200 screen. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, but back to the X1. So the X1 Carbon, though, so it's Windows 8.1, obviously. 14-inch uh, Ultrabook, latest version of the Intel processor and chipset. Uh, nine hours of battery life. 
it has kind of a unique single plug kind of thing. This is the type of thing Apple usually does. You know, like over the years, I always kind of wondered why they never came up with a docking solution for their portable computers. But what they've done is they've taken the power plug and they're using that as expansion as well. And so you can have it as both a dock and a, and a power port. So you just have the one thing plugged into the computer. Um, you know, and expand it off on the dock. So that's kind of a cool thing. And I, they don't really, you can almost tell from this shot, but that screen actually goes parallel to the body. You can make it so that ah, it's perfect straight. Yeah. Flat, you mean? Flat. Mm. Thank you. So it's, and uh, it yeah. has that little ThinkPad red thing, whatever you yeah, call it. Yeah, the nubbin, which I love personally. I love that too. Yeah, I would turn off the trackpad personally, but yep. that's my thing. Well, that, that's, that's their claim about to fame. The I know layout, nobody else though. does you, that. Yeah. Hmm? What, what about the keyboard layout? Uh, well, like, I guess there's kind of a non-standard layout going on. Um, there's I no caps lock service. Yeah. The, Dr. Pizza had a complete meltdown about this keyboard. I layout. actually, th I looked at it and I thought, you know what? Peter's kind of known I'm, I'm okay with all this stuff. They took well, he, away he the change. caps lock. Okay, so for for well, I disable caps lock on every computer. I first only thing use I do. it by mistake ever. Yep. Yep. Right, yep. but for developers, that can be a problem because a lot of them need the caps well, lock. Or, or the way they do it is there's a shift key that you can hold down, and the light comes That's on. Fine. It's in caps lock. Yeah. So where the caps lock key was, there's a home and probably an end button in that space. Yeah. The other weird bit is there's a there's a kind of a touch sensitive strip where the function keys usually are. And it's application specific. And there's some several hundred applications it knows about. And I guess you can program others. But it will change its functions based on that if that's what you want it to do. Or you can switch it into just a normal uh, function key mode as well. Isn't the um, delete or the back button in a weird place too? Let me see if I can see. Uh, delete and backspace are up in the corner together. So, if, yeah, look right there. The top, Those top two keys on the right. Our backspace and delete. Oh, that's very strange. It's pretty <laughs> well, odd. except for one thing. When I look at my the keyboard I'm using now, yeah, there's actually, no backspace and delete are in those basic positions. I don't even have a backspace. I have a delete. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, I see. There's delete right and delete left. Yeah, you're right. You know what? That's not so weird. I, I think the weirdest. There, there are two weirdisms. So the uh, the escape button is next to the one where. It, where it's usually above that, up, up by the right. Function. It's not on that row. It would be what, what's usually in that space is kind of like the tilde. tilde. Yeah, and look where that is now. It's it's to the right of the space bar. See, programmers aren't going to like that because they do use tilde and back tick a lot. And now it's way the where are the here down here. Yeah, down there. And yeah. what's usually there on a Windows keyboard is this key that no one ever uses, which right. is a like a Windows right key, uh, right click kind of key. Right. Context menu key. They also have replaced the control lock with a home end key. So home end is no longer down over by page up, page down. Yep. I guess, you know, you'd get used to it, but it is for sure non-standard. Yeah, it's a little different, but I, none of these things are an issue for me. Um, I like that there's no function key, right? Because one of the problems with keyboards is that when there is a, an FN key down there, it's it's sometimes it's to the left of control, sometimes it's to the right of control. Right. And, and, you know, figuring that out is always a mess. So that's not there mucking things up. But they do um, have a. Like, they now have a strip at the top, yeah. That is kind of a function ribbon, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and they. Know, gonna, I mean, I'm it's gonna, interesting because I'm on the definitely. Lenovo site here, and they have a lot of close-ups of the keyboard. I think they understand that this yeah. is a potential problem, and so they want to really give you a chance at least to look at. Well, it. Well, uh, yeah. As far as um, developers go, though, I, I, you know, as a relatively small market, I mean, Lenovo's not targeting developers, no, 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 right? No, no, no. I mean, this is a I, business laptop. There's no yeah. Although developers love Lenovo, so. I know. Yeah. I think a lot of developers would like just a regular laptop like this. And, um, yeah, I, I, I think, I think yeah, it is a fairly small cross-section of people. But why did they change it? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know? I think they wanted to do something broken. dynamic with that function key row. Yeah. And what that yeah. screwed up were a couple of keys, like, um, yeah. uh, the escape key and the home and end keys probably would have been part of that. And I think in thinking about that, they were like, you know, we, we've been talking about this caps lock thing for a long time. And I, I think they actually solved that with the shift that can lock. Uh, and I don't think that's too difficult for people. So if you really do need caps lock for some reason, it's right there. I got to point out, uh, they're selling two versions, one with Windows 7. Oh, they're really? Prominently displayed yes. right next yeah. to I one know. with Windows 8. 
I think that's good because, you know, if this is a business laptop, a lot of businesses are standardized on Windows 7. Yes. So, yeah. Good right. to have the choice. Yeah. It's expensive, though. 2099 bucks for that's a big i7. That's MacBook Pro territory. Yeah, more than yeah. Mac, much more than MacBook Pro. Uh, well, it's a 14-inch. So, I mean, it's it's sort of between the 13 and the 15 MacBook Pro. Yeah, but 2100 bucks. That's big bucks. It's more than yeah, a Mac, a 15 inch Mac. So I think Pro. when you can configure it yourself, which is coming soon, Mary Jo would probably be able to. That starts at 1299. Yeah, you can get rid of the multi touch if you want right, to do that. You right. can pick and choose what you've got to go. Well, you know, I, I, I we're spending a lot of time on this, but this is actually to me this is one of the best Windows laptops oh, out yeah. there, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, so uh, there's a there's a reason to do that. Actually, it is it is MacBook Pro territory. You're right. The 15 inch. Uh, i7 MacBook Pro is is twenty six hundred bucks. Yeah, um, it's big bucks. I yeah, mean, so we're we're you're right. There's it's no the way same. around it. This yeah. is expensive. Yeah, that's the top of the line Retina. Uh, you okay, Mary Jo? What's, uh, what's I'm I have been very sick this week. So oh, sorry. join the club. God, I thought <laughs> you had allergies. Just now really. getting better. I was. We've just been, and yeah, staying up all weather. all day on New yeah. Year's didn't help either. Oh, yeah, 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 and then yeah. the cold weather here uh, is just like, uh. cold. As they say on the television, it's cold and flu season. <laughs> well, I get like a cold in early December, and then I'm, I cough for the rest of the week. Yeah, I exactly. Know. Like, never goes away. It kind of, it modulates. It's like worse, and then it seems like it's getting better, I'm and it gets sorry. worse. You know? Yeah. So back to the Microsoft CES 2014 page, yes. which is... Looks kind of like The Verge or, you know, Yahoo Tech. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very Metro style. Oh, very yeah. Metro. New Windows devices... I think it's mostly about Look the at devices. This. We're at CES this week. Check out yeah. our full coverage right here. Yep. Uh, oh, on their Twitter feed? <laughs> well, that's long form. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they have their, their communications people are there, the ones who are blogging. So they are that's there. Really as, new, as a news organization. Right, as a news organization. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. Boy, competition coming left and right for the old little you know, twit. Right. Uh, you know, you know the other um, machine that got announced there that I thought was pretty interesting was the Samsung Ative Book Nine, the new one. Um, yeah, they the announced a fifteen-inch one that has fourteen hours of battery, but worse resolution. Oh. So that's the update to the machine I'm currently using. You yeah. like the right? You're using I have a fifteen-inch, okay. the previous gen. Uh, which is not called Ative, whatever. Nine. They, I, I'm not even sure what Ative. it's called. So I think they just call it Siri, yeah. Series Nine before or something like that. Yeah. It's a Tive, like a leave. A Tive, right? Teave. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no respect for Samsung's brands, Leo. I'm not. Apparently, even neither does it. Michael Bay. So you're in good company. <laughs> oh, that was that was <laughs> absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. That will live in memory as, that, as perhaps the meltdown. worst keynote, ev you know, ever. And you but, felt so bad. I felt so bad for the guy. Oh, yeah, of I mean, course. That's why it's it's yes, painful. I, it's not comfortable, uh, right? So nobody yeah. wants to be so here. Anyone who has stood up in front of other people and had to do anything understands the pain yeah. of that. And um, I felt for him. But, you know, too. It's, in hindsight, so many people, it, couldn't have been better publicity for Samsung. I know. It's true. It's true. But, man, it, and so many people I saw saying, why couldn't he have ad-libbed? They were asking him questions about he's himself a director, and his work. director, not an actor. Exactly. And he, he knew like he had, he was supposed to make certain remarks, right? So he's probably like in his head going like, Oh, what am I going to say? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel bad for him. He, I he did bad. what a lot of people do when they're faced with a teleprompter. No one should ever read it. Teleprompters should, right. I wish they would be banned from the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I, whoever, That's actually what happened to me uh, in New Zealand uh, last a year and a half ago. I went down there and you know, we we're doing our, our pre-show stuff. And I, I, you know, usually I just go and talk and that's how I do things. And they, they had all this teleprompter action going. Yeah. I've never done a teleprompter before. So we did a couple of walkthroughs and I, I had a little meltdown and I was like, I'm not, I, I'm not reading this. No, I, I, this is not how I do things. Uh, you and, know, uh, and it went fine. You know, after that it was fine. People you know, watch just, television and they see prompters and they think that that's yeah. how that's what you do, and the people who do it well make it so e look so easy that you don't realize it's not at all easy. No. And uh, oh, it's not natural if that's not out. the way you do things. I mean, it's just not. It's so what not... Bay did is he was uh, he skipped a chunk of the script. He was okay. nervous, so he skipped a chunk yeah. of the script. So it wasn't actually off. He seemed to be indicating that it wasn't working. What he properly. said in his blog post 
was, it's my fault. I skipped the intro. I skipped ahead. Now, what happens is the guy who's doing the prompter goes, what the hell? And starts, <laughs> and then, but see, it was a bad prompter prompter because then he starts turning the knob, looking for <laughs> where they are. So what you do if you're a, for anybody ever wants to run a prompter, let me tell you, you jump <laughs> yes. to something they haven't said, the next thing they haven't said, and you sit there until they read until that. Until they hit it. Yeah. What you don't do is try to figure out where they are now and get there, because all that does is make them go crazy. And you could see them trying to, and then Bay. I don't blame him. I would have walked off. Hey, they. Well, the rumor was he was paid a million and a half dollars. Oh wow, really? Well, he's doing more than that, right? He's going to be traveling yeah. around with the Samsung 105 inch. 4K yeah. display showing clips from Transformers in cities at a city near you. So obviously it's a big, you know, deal. Mm -hmm. I I speculated. I thought maybe he just got paid by one of those TVs. I'd have done right. that. Mm -hmm. Right. Give me a 105-inch TV. I would have walked off the stage with it, you know, just to make sure I had <laughs> under my arm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, uh, it's that was it. no, 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 nothing more to see here except that Samsung got more publicity than they could have ever dreamed. That's true. <laughs> Worth every penny. back to the, the Ativ or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to. Find I don't know it. if you would ever consider using a machine that with that large, but I, the one I have, I, I like it a lot. I would. Um, it's 15 inches. I would consider. I'm looking at the specs, right? What do you mean inches? large? Is it that large? It's a 15 inch screen. Yeah, 15 inch screen. Oh, um, that's what I use. 1920. Yeah, no, I do by too. I do too. No, not 1920. And honestly, for the size, it's not that heavy. Is it the Ative Book 9 Plus? Yeah, it's the same yes. body of, of the machine that I have now. Uh, my machine was a Windows 7 machine, so it doesn't come with touch. And this one has some crazy high resolution, I think. Or maybe that's the 13 inch. Actually, the 15 inch might not have a crazy high resolution. No, uh, the, the new one, the 14 hour battery. Is lower resolution, um, but and the trade-off is you get more, way more battery oh, life. Fourteen battery, hours. Right. So the thirteen-inch version you can get with some, you know, thirty-two eighty by whatever, or some crazy resolution like that. I think. Yeah. Well, and as no, usual, Samsung is putting some sort of weird Samsung junkola on there. Yeah. It's a convergence <laughs> solution with Samsung <laughs> Side Sync and Home I just Sync want a Lite. Laptop guys. <laughs> you know, know how do they do that? Just want to type. Is, but does the yeah. camera have a golf mode? Because I'd like to bring my <laughs> laptop onto the links. <laughs> uh, those it? people exist, Leo. Oh, apparently they all work at Samsung. <laughs> I, I do have, yeah, I do have a certain antagonism toward <coughs> Samsung as well, I guess. Yeah, I and yeah. I and I don't feel like they're bad people. <laughs> just misguided. Just I'm misguided. Not saying they're all going to hell. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, the company, the leaders of the company, certainly. Asus no, I don't know. Uh, is doing the Franken machine. This is not yeah. the first time. I mean, I think they've done Transformers and and so forth before, but is haven't they? It seems like everything that's new is was was yeah. old much. because. Yeah. I seem to remember, unless I'm completely mistaken, two years ago, Windows plus Android in one device. But now they're doing it again. The Transformer yeah. Book Duet. We agree that this is a, a machine without a purpose, though. I don't understand. Who wants this? Yeah. I, don't, I agree. I don't understand. Who I am very this? confused who this is for. Um, this is like a dual boot machine. It is. You Except can switch back and forth. They're not really dual booting because they're both no. available, right? It, right. You can switch yeah. back and forth. when, uh, And then... I guess when you're using Android, you get slightly more battery, I think, than if you're using only Windows. It, I don't know. I, I, don't I just know. was kind of thinking, who, who's, who is this for? I don't know. And I'm not totally sure. I it could be for people. I, it could be for people who use a lot of Google apps like Gmail, G Drive, maybe. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Look, <laughs> you could take it off the keyboard, and now it's Android. <laughs> then you put it back, and that's yeah, it's like you unplug it, and it turns into something different. Yeah. Oh, it's so weird. I don't, and uh, I guess it is dual boot, because it takes a little while to go from one to the other. I guess if you really want to play your Android, you know, games. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair to say that the software solutions for doing that in Windows are not seamless and great. Yeah. Right. You could do but, blue you know, stacks, I, I, right? Blue Stacks hey, is bring... very not complete. Uh, right. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's right. you know it works, but uh, you know. Yeah. I just written something like about this, but you know, to me, a ThinkPad X1 Carbon with a 
you know, a seven inch Nexus seven tablet would kind of solve this problem very nicely. Right. And not be very complex. That's and it's Windows eight one. It's not it's not R T. It's Windows Pro. Uh, uh, I is think it? it is, yeah. I'm not even sure. I don't know. I guess we're so uninterested that we don't. I just, yeah, you know, I, I, it's just so right. hard to remember. I think it is Windows. Uh, Intel, yeah, it's Intel based. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, which is interesting because I guess Android, I mean, does Android run on Intel? I guess it does. Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. Here's the Vivo Tab Note 8, designed for one handed use. How many times have you said, I like Windows, but I wish I didn't have to use both hands? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Windows in the palm of your hand. Yeah. So, so it's yet, yet another mini tablet. I'm not sure there's anything special going on Adam here. Adam processor, other than, uh, two gigs RAM. Yeah. Eight no, hours that Lenovo I, mini I, tablet looked cool. That you yeah, I think the Lenovo ThinkPad 8 is more interesting because it's yeah. a slightly faster processor. Um, it has a high-res screen, which is a first, right, on the Windows mini tablet. It's 1920 by 1200. You know, it's a ThinkPad. And, and they do the whole, I haven't seen it yet, but they have a... Uh, you know, kind of a travel keyboard solution and all that kind of stuff. You can use it like a real computer. So that that's that could be of interest as well. You know, I just feel like everybody's throwing stuff against the wall. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah. It's like, let's see, can we find any way to differentiate all these tablets that right. look exactly the same? <laughs> right. Bill I think Hicks the mini is saying, are tough because they are almost literally exactly the same. They <laughs> I mean, they're just so close. Bill Hicks in our chat room is saying, tech used to solve problems. Now it's like, Creating, yeah. the, looking for a problem. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're right. It's like it, tech was like the tool for the job, not the job. Yeah. You know, I've like invented this just... interesting new tool. It's like a hammer, but not. And let's just see if anybody what wants What do you use it. it for? I don't know. Let's see what people use it for. Well, just you know throw what? it up against the wall. <laughs> that idea stinks. Yeah. Yeah. That's our industry. I have a three headed hammer I've invented. And I'm sure somebody's going to want this. You don't, you wouldn't see that in any other industry but the tech industry. It's crazy. Where they just, it's, uh, I mean, in, uh, it's like I, a car, it's like a car company coming up with a three wheeled car now. Yeah. And when asked why, they said, I don't know, let's see how it goes. We thought the accelerator should be <laughs> on know? the left. It just seemed like a better I mean, way. a little bit of money by not having four tires. There is, a, there was a car at CES that only has one door. <laughs> it was. <laughs> 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 but when you, a, when, you, when you went through it, you came out on the other side of the car? <laughs> um, I, we did a report on Father Robert Ballister. I'm trying to remember the uh, brand name of it. It was like, uh, I can't remember the name of it. And, uh, it doesn't sound safe. It's $8,000. And uh, it's, it was the E-L-I-O, e -L -I -O, is that it? Okay. This isn't one of those like Indian car it's things. 80, 84 miles per gallon, three oh. wheels, <laughs> one door. On the left, where the driver would be, it's basically a trike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it won't be out for a year, but uh, they're showing it to uh, at CES this year. It's like a spaceship from a Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's a little odd. But, you know. Does it run Android? <laughs> yes. It looks like an yes, Android. Yes, it does. Look, it's got little, uh, little green eyes. It kind of looks like the Android guy. Mm -hmm. That green guy. It does. <laughs> 84 miles a gallon. It seems like it should get better than 84 miles a gallon. That doesn't seem like that's good for something. To, if I'm going to drive that kind of crap around, <laughs> I should get 150 miles to the gallon. Right? <laughs> it, it looks like a, a funny car. It looks yeah. pretty weird. It is a funny car. It's a funny car. <laughs> How about a 4K laptop? How do you feel now? Mr. Know, Consumer. <laughs> this is the... What uh, kind of battery life is that thing? Tecra W50. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> really? No kidding. That's Look quick, thing, it's right? awesome, I, and it's gone. Yeah, I was talking I, I was talking about that on Twitter this week. It's like, okay, you have all these trade-offs, right? If you really want awesome battery life, why do you have to trade off your screen resolution, right, for that? You have, to, you have to pick, like, what's the most important thing instead of being able to kind of find something that's the least common denominator? What what does 4K get you today? I mean, I, I know there are some aspects of this that would be interesting to people, uh, you know, maybe in photography or... Well, so here, just for people who wonder, it's a 15.6-inch screen, 3840 by 2160. So that's 282 pixels per inch, considerably lower than the Retina uh, phones and so forth, Retina-style phones that we're seeing. I mean... Uh, as far as uh, pixels, pixels per Pixels per inch. inch. Well, and I think you kind of rate it on that. I, go, I guess you're at arm's length, so it's not quite the same. Well, I don't know. Um, I just don't. 
I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you want to just kind of do it to show that you can do it. And well, eventually, you get well, articles like this. <laughs> Toshiba yeah. introduces world's first 4K laptops. They do not notably mention, this is the Microsoft Windows blog, they the, notably the do not life. mention battery life, yeah. Right. And the other issue is, of course, you have to have a, and Apple learned this, you have to have a CPU that could push all those pixels. Uh, Apple's yeah. first Retina MacBooks were, were uh, sluggish. I don't, I, I'm ne I haven't bought a Toshiba laptop in a while. Mm. Um, I don't know. Here's another one. This is a concept PC from Toshiba. The shape shifter. Oh, yeah. This thing is weird, really weird. So if you if you thought two in one PCs were enough, this is a five in one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh come on, guys. So there's your laptop. There's your tablet. It can this makes the yoga the yoga look lazy. There's it a does. canvas mode and a presentation TV mode. What the hell. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It seems like just pieces fold off and break. And yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, if, if a Macintosh, <laughs> yeah, if a Mac is a BMW, this thing is like a McLaren. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not even an, it's just a. But to be fair, concept only. I mean, this isn't even something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is, sure. this is sometimes why CES to me seems like an exercise in futility. Mm -hmm. You see so much stuff that you're never going to see again. <laughs> yeah. It's a metaphor for life. Now, I'm curious because Microsoft clearly is stung a little bit by the Chromebook. They're doing a lot of spending a lot of marketing dollars saying you were scroogled by that Chromebook. Um, yeah. But really, and as you pointed out last week, the reason Chromebooks sell is two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Are you gonna? Are we seeing low priced Windows PCs for that? I mean, that range. Getting getting yes. closer. <clears throat> Um, They're under 400 now for they they actually put a blog post up on on the Windows blog this week saying here's four laptops under 400 bucks. The title laptops insanely affordable now. Insanely. They're insane too, it's but insanely we'll get to that. For affordable. <laughs> but you know what's good because people who haven't shopped for a laptop in a while, I think they that if you haven't been in the market, you might think, "Uh, it's way over 1000 bucks for anything usable, right. right?" And if you haven't gone into yeah. a store looking looking at them and kicking the kicking the tires but there are very decent ones that'll make a lot of people uh very happy for Look at, this 400 dollars. the asus t100 ta 350 bucks includes office includes mm -hmm. office it's multi-touch and it's yeah. a tablet yeah it's not it's really not that shabby i mean um i'm not going to be replacing my my personal laptop with this machine but um wow uh, it, Dell Inspiron 15R, 279 280 bucks. Yep. 15-inch screen, 4 gigs of RAM, an inch, less than an inch thick, with a pleasingly textured lid and palm rest. <laughs> sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a toilet. Be nice because you're going to be lugging this thing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love your pleasingly textured lid and palm rest. It has a certain designery snappiness. Designery snappiness? That's what they say <laughs> that makes you feel like you're getting away with something for the price. Wow. I'm getting away with something for the price. <laughs> and it's designer. Who wrote this? It's It's got tons of ports and a sweet design. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. This is some intern. They got an intern. Remember here. hard drives? David it's got S. one of those, too. It doesn't even say his last name. He's so embarrassed. David S. writing on the uh, Windows blog. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I uh, he's the intern. He's definitely an intern. He's from Rutgers. <laughs> he's a sophomore at Rutgers. He uh, plays basketball and hopes someday to be working in the uh, United Nations as a translator. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's interning at Microsoft, writing copy like this. <laughs> so I, a I designery know, I this, snappiness. <laughs> there's an article to be written here about using one of the, these machines. Putting Chrome on it and comparing it to Chrome, uh, comparing it to a well, Chromebook. that's the market, right? Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, we got to do something. I don't know. You know. I mean, that two hundred eighty bucks. That's something. Yeah. That's the lowest price of the bunch. But yeah. That's right in there. Yep. 
Sweet. And it's Adele, right? <laughs> well, and it's got a textured palm rest and a sweet design. <laughs> a su a sweet Does it have design. a heated palm rest? Tons of that ports. would make it really awesome. Is that is that two thousand plus it's pounds tons of ports? <laughs> tons. No, Why has no one ever done a heated palm rest like for Ooh. winter days? Uh, most laptops have automatic heated <laughs> palm rest. It's, just, it's not I a selling it. point. You know? How about a mouse pad that's heated? Like uh, palm rest cooling, I think, would be. Yes, <laughs> this laptop is really hot. No, hot. We, we know mean it really a hot yeah. laptop. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there's our tour of CES. Aren't you glad you didn't go this year? <laughs> that's we tried. We tried to manufacture some excitement there. I, I have to say, though, I think those Lenovo's are very, very interesting too. And I'll just leave it at that. I think that's every time I look at the, <laughs> at the X1 Carbon, I like my finger hovers on the mm -hmm. buy it now. Every I time. Am I am thinking of buying that one. Yeah. I, I was yeah. kind of on a previous show saying Sony, but now I'm very much leaning to that one. I think we I think all it's, agree Lenovo is the class still, isn't? Aren't they? They've they've they kept at good. least at the high end. They've kept that ThinkPad. I, oh no, I, I think they've done a good job with it. I. The problem I have with Lenovo is, uh, well, with ThinkPad, I should say uh, specifically, you can't really find a place to see this anywhere. Right. You know? <laughs> yep. I, I, and I, when you're, if you were going to spend two grand on something, I think being mm -hmm. able to touch it and see it and evaluate the quality of the screen, um, you know, would be nice. Yep. They need to figure that out. They should start Lenovo stores. And then they could have Lenovo store within a stores. Somebody How having... Lenovo in the Windows stores, uh, I mean the Microsoft stores. For those of you who yeah. have them, unlike they do, us. actually, they do have a number of Lenovo devices at the Microsoft stores. Do they? I'm not sure yeah. if they have ThinkPads though. I think they might just be like the Yoga and those Idea mm -hmm. Pad type machines. That's what they need. They Will need a, this, like a business center at the Microsoft store. Will yep. this be enough to get uh, the market turned around a little bit, and get people selling or buying rather? Well, selling if you're selling. So I don't want to go over top over the top with the medical comparisons, but it's like a quality of life thing at this point, Leo. We're trying to <laughs> slow down <laughs> the effect, not stop it and turn it around. Like we're not going to be 25 years old again, but never again. You know, <laughs> yeah. We can go to the gym, and <laughs> you know we can we can work on. It. Mary Jo Kid Clayton tells me there's a Microsoft store in Queens. There is. But wow. let me tell you, Mary Jo does not leave the borough of Manhattan. For <laughs> I do. I go to Queens. Does that, does I've that been require there. crossing water? <laughs> no. It does. Oh, it does. It does. Okay. Oh yeah, Queens is uh, is on the is is, is Queens on Queens the island? Queens is almost Connecticut, Leo. <laughs> Queens is uh, it, Queens is not on the Manhattan Island. <laughs> it's on uh, Long Island. It's it's yeah. over there. Over but, there. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's not so that funny. close. It's no. not that close. I, I looked up if I could get there easily, and with all the trains and switching and all that, it was going to take me about an hour and a half oh. to get there. And then you get so, over there and be like, yeah, we don't have any ThinkPads. And then you get over there and you buy something, you get this big box, right? And then what? I know. I don't know. I, had, I did that. I know. I, I, I'm spoiled. In fact, I'm spoiled. The 15-inch uh, Samsung, I carried it home from the Microsoft store. So you get in Boston. And so you get a box that's the size of a piece of luggage. It has like a handle on it. And you walk yeah. around Boston with like a, like a That's look, a please idea. rob me. I just spent $2,000 okay. or well, 1500 bucks or whatever it was at the time. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, it's not ideal. I'm just gonna get there some. is a store in Queens though. There's a store in, um, there's a couple surrounding stores here. There's one in New Jersey, Paramus Mall, I think is opening now. And yeah, we need one in Manhattan. <clears throat> or several, one might say. Several might be good. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Microsoft yeah. Store. Huh. Oh, what are you no. looking for? I'm looking for, well, there's one at the Time Warner Center, but it's a. a That's just a kiosk. A, yeah. A literally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've been to that one. They, you know, it's a, it's a little tiny booth in a mall. Right. That's what it is. Like where you, well, where you, you know, can you, buy you like could, cell phone covers the, and yeah, stuff. <laughs> the online store and to see what they have. I don't think, I bet right. they don't even have. I mean, they'll have Lenovo. I don't think they carry store. ThinkPads in, in the Microsoft Store right. online. I mean, right? they have, I'm looking right now. So they have, yep. yeah, IdeaPads. That's what they, oh, no, actually, excuse me. They, they have they? a ThinkPad X1 Carbon Touch. They but do. But it's the oh. pre previous gen. Okay, well, maybe they'll get the new one. So that suggests maybe, yeah. That's good. They, they probably will get it. 
even that one's expensive. That one is, you know, last year's model, third gen uh, Intel processor, seventeen hundred bucks. Wow! And it was uh, previously nineteen hundred dollars. Mm. Yikes! Yeah, it's big bucks. So uh, what you do here? You take the uh, N22 bus. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That takes you to... It depends uh, on the time of day, Leo. You don't want to take that bus in the afternoon. <laughs> it takes, according to Google Maps, <laughs> an hour and a now. half right? to get out yeah. to Hempstead. Exactly. Oh, my God. It could be done. It, it could be can't done. be done that easily. It could be done. Wow. But while you're on the way, you could visit the beautiful Flushing Meadows Corona Park. And the Queen's Botanical Garden. Make a day of it. <laughs> Beautiful Queens. Uh, moving along. Oh, God. <laughs> I know people who talk like that. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all do. I am, I have deeply, I have to say, I deeply regret the loss of regionals, regional New York uh, and others' accents in the world. I'm sorry that people like Paul feel they have to talk like, you know, Dan Rather. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Get your accent on. Get your region on, man. Uh, a couple of beers later, it comes flying right out, Leo. <laughs> I know it's, it yeah. does. It's like riding a bike. I know it does. I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Windows 8.1 Update 1. We're we not have an update. The, we're not <laughs> done yet. Yeah, we have an update on Update 1. What's the update on Update 1, Mary Jo Foley? The update is... Um, there was a screenshot leak today, in fact, on Update 1 over on WZOR. I guess that's, I, I don't think I can pronounce that word. Wozer. He's, he's, he's a leaker of many Windows things, and he put some screenshots up that he said are the Update 1 uh, internal build. He said the OEMs are going to start getting private builds of this in the next week or so, and that he believes um, end of March... This shall R it, it, be at the RTM. same time as build. At the same time as build, right? Which kind of is what we thought would was would be the case, given when build is uh, that they would want to have that coming out around that time. Uh, so yeah, this isn't confirmed by Microsoft, but update one is to Windows eight one is supposed to be a free update to Windows eight one. It's supposed to bring the Windows eight one platform more in alignment with Windows Phone eight dot one, the blue release. And supposedly ha these two will have more common APIs because of Update 1 and Windows Phone Blue coming out about the same time. Uh, the one thing we don't know still is whether there's going to be many or any UI changes to Windows 8.1 with this release. Because there's been some speculation that maybe they'll introduce a start menu to go along with the start button. And... I had heard originally that was going to not be until next year, but then I've heard wavering uh, since then that it could come sooner than that. But I'm I'm hearing from my contacts not in update one. So maybe if there's an update two or an update three, maybe it'll come then. Uh, but right now, all we know about is update one. <clears throat> so that's your update on update one. <laughs> Do you think that's going to be the <laughs> final name? Are they, are they going to go with this kind of Windows phony? Windows I know. I, I asked if it was going to be update name. I was. I thought they might call it eight two, and I keep hearing no. Um, so I don't know. It, I don't know how they're going to end up ultimately calling that. If they'll call it like Spring Update or Update One, um, I would think they're going to try to bring it more in alignment with the way they name the Windows Phone updates. And so, if you remember, um, they've been using Update with that. So, like yep. Windows Phone Eight Update One Two Three. Yeah, and I think this thing, like the Windows Phone updates, is actually referred to as a GDR internally mm. which stands for general distribution distribution release. release which which has some meaning to it in the sense that uh, windows 8.1 was this weird kind of update that went through the store but this one will be delivered through windows update so it's going to be like right. a you know like a not not a service pack but like a service pack in the sense that it will be delivered in that fashion mm-hmm If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, so we're getting closer. Um, and we, we had kind of thought that the reason they were timing build for the spring was because they have so many things supposedly coming out in the spring. So Windows 8 Update 1, 8 1 Update 1, and then Windows Phone Blue supposedly is spring, maybe even the Surface Mini uh, spring. 
So this makes sense to put build right right around that time frame so that developers can get a jump on all this stuff. Will we have a new And we'll CEO be out again then? visiting you, Leo. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I'll get some cherry flavored beer for you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't, uh, don't put yourself out, Leo. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I have we, I have people probably have. I have people who get beer. Yeah. They're the beer people. Yes. Um, do you want to, I think we've done the, well, wait a minute. We yeah, saw, this, this is phones that are dual booting Windows mm -hmm. Phone and Android? This We're not talking about uh, PCs. Do right. We, this is, the rumors are that the Windows yeah. Phone team is looking at an Android dual boot phone. Mary Jo yeah. Foley breaks the story on ZDNet. <laughs> no, I didn't break this one, uh, but, um... <clears throat> supposedly, and now we have two reports claiming this. So it, last October, Bloomberg had a report saying Microsoft was going around talking to its other Windows Phone OEMs saying, hey, would you guys be interested if we could somehow let you run Android or and or Windows on your devices? Uh, and the, the thinking seems to be if you're a phone maker, you could make one generic device and then either the carrier or the customer or a store would be able to specify at, at the point of sale which operating system it would run. Um, so the idea, it, it was just kind of floated out there as would you guys be interested in this? Uh, this week, the information, uh, that new publication that just launched recently, came out with a very similar report saying they're, try they're just trying all kinds of ideas and plans saying, hey, wh what do you guys think? Would you want a dual booting phone? Would you be interested in running Android on Windows somehow? Um, and they're, they're just kind of throwing all these crazy ideas out there and seeing if any of them resonate with the Windows phone partners. Supposedly, they want to keep other partners in the fold, even though they're buying Nokia. Uh, so the ideas are kind of crazy, and it's hard to imagine how some of these might work. Is it going to be an emulator on top of Windows that would let you run Android apps? Um, is Microsoft actually going to fork Android? That's actually been put out there as an idea, that they could take the open source version of Android and create their own distribution, the way that Amazon does on the Kindle. Yeah, I know. All these things sound crazy. It's like, well, wow, really? Microsoft, Android? But it sounds, I've, I've asked some of my sources and it sounds like, yes, they are asking around about hmm. this stuff. Well, I think that's prudent, probably. I mean, um, it is. It doesn't mean they're going to do it. It just means it doesn't. it's on the table. It doesn't. And right. it would only be prudent to have every possible option on the table. Yep. Yep. Especially when you're four point seven percent or whatever it is of the market, yeah. you gotta right. you gotta look at other options. Yeah, it's like saying Microsoft okay. considering dumping Windows Phone. Well, I'm sure that's one of the options. Sounds, yeah, it sounds like a crazy headline, but right, it doesn't mean they're gonna do to it. Play. Yeah, right. Yeah, I I feel like we talked about this sometime in the past year. This notion that this is what they should do. I think it was maybe in the context of the HTC X1. And, mm -hmm. you know, why couldn't HTC just make that device and have it run Windows Phone too? Right. I mean, why? why right. HTC's you know, why in enough just, trouble. They could try stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Microsoft does say uh, record sales of uh, Windows Phones during the holiday period. Is that uh, credible? What does that mean, record sales? Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're not, that's the problem. So we don't have a number to say this is what it was and this is what it is. But I, I think what they did say was that it was roughly double <clears throat> what it was in the holiday period a year ago. Well, a year ago, though, what what, what was the predominant Windows phone? That's well, pre-Nokia. A year ago, the, 9, 10, uh, the, the Lumia 920 9, It was the 920? Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. The HTC 8X had come out. Okay. Um, Samsung had announced, but I don't think they had actually shipped their... It's what are we calling it Ativ S or whatever? Yeah. Um, I think that was about it. It's boy, it's such a different landscape than a year ago. It is. I know. <clears throat> um, it is. Yeah, but those those numbers over on NeoWin, I think Paul, you you tweeted about those too. There there are, I think, uh, more than a dozen markets now where Windows Phone is in double digits. It's yes. the number two mobile OS. Which is surprising, right? Because oh, everybody's 12, like, oh. Yeah. India, Mexico, Italy, Chile, <laughs> Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, 
Poland, South Africa, Ukraine, Hungary, Finland, Czech Republic, and Greece. And there are 24 markets where Windows Phone is actually beating the iPhone. Chile, Colombia, Czech Republic, Egypt. I think these are places where the iPhone's not sold. But I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, that could be. Ecuador, Finland, of course, because of, of Nokia. Yeah, and, and places that have India. very strict price issues, you know. Right. Uh, Saudi yeah, Arabia. Fair South enough. Africa. But I mean, yeah. I, I, okay. <laughs> you know, but that's like saying, well, I, the iPhone does, uh, you know, it sells Android in the United States and in one or two other markets because those people are rich. You know, it's like, well, yeah, okay, we can qualify it. I mean, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> you know, it's still, it's an interesting stat. And it's the type of thing I know that drives Apple people bonkers, which is actually why I like it so much. But, um, <laughs> You know, it's just so it's so beautiful, self-serving. Um, but yeah, I, I I think the problem for Windows Phone, the, the kind of realistic view of this, and the thing that I've said about this kind of thing in the past is that, you know, there are other issues at stake here. I mean, um, Windows Phone had a spectacular year for, on many notes, um, but for that to happen, that the Lumia 520 had to happen, a device that sells for ninety nine dollars without a contract and. Um, that's kind of like a volume market, but it's not a very profitable market. And so is the future of Windows Phone kind of this bargain basement thing? And if it is, we're screwed because Android can compete very effectively in that market. And in fact, I would say one of the big changes, one of the biggest changes in the mobile landscape of last year happened right at the end of the year when Google started selling devices through Motorola to target this market, two of them. Um, they're very, very interesting. And they already have the Nexus stuff, which also targets the same market. So uh, I wouldn't get too complacent um, <laughs> if I were running Windows hmm, Phone right. right now. I think, though, this is the story for all smartphones, is that all the growth <clears throat> is yeah. going to happen in in uh, the cheap side. Yeah, and it's it's a problem. It's a problem for Apple in, in some ways, although Apple, you know, Apple just like a, to, it says, forget it. I don't care. We yeah. don't want Apple's, that market. We're not BMW, going after it. Yeah. Yep. They, they can, never they, have. Yeah. And they're going to be successful with that. Their margins are excellent. They don't care. <laughs> right. But, you know, I, I look at the mobile market like the PC market. And uh, the PC and Windows PCs uh, became a, kind of a force because of the volume. And uh, they were, obviously they sold at lower prices than Macs. And so that was like 95% of the market for a long, long time. Um, I think in the mobile space, that stuff is happening to Android and so it was a great year for Windows Phone, but it's still single-digit market share, you know, worldwide, um, and still huge problems in countries like the United States and China, which are the two biggest uh, smartphone markets in the world. Avro uh, is I, is pointing out that you know, um, <laughs> Nokia did sell out to Microsoft this year, so yeah. the it wasn't like the 520 was such a such a money maker that. That. Right. And actually, I, you could even amplify that a little bit. Um, you asked what were, were the phones from last year, and I said the 920. Um, the 920 was uh, Nokia's you know, flagship device a year ago, a year, a year well, 15 months ago, whatever. Um, in the subsequent amount of time, they have shipped such devices as the 928 on uh, Verizon, the 925 on T-Mobile in, in the United States and other countries as well. Uh, the 1020 and the 1520. And none of these devices have really sold spectacularly well. Um, they all have subtle or dramatic improvements over the 920, depending on which one we're talking about. Um, they're all great phones in their own right. I mean, I, I actually think each of those is, it, especially when you think about when they were released, uh, is a spectacular device. I posted some photos today that I took for the 1020. I still think the 1020 is one of the most amazing digital devices ever created. But the fact remains... When you look at Windows Phone usage share, don't even look at the rest of the market. Just look at Windows within the, the scope of Windows Phone sales. Nobody uses these devices. They're single-digit usage share. They're non-existent on the, you know, top ten, top twenty, however you want to look at it. They just don't factor, for the most part. Um, whereas the five twenty, the five twenty-one, you know, those low-end devices, six twenty, they do, and that's what people are buying. And so that's the reality of the market. I don't think. I don't think Nokia makes any money on those devices. So it's, you know, absolutely that's a problem. Why doesn't anyone buy the 1020? I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, too much camera for the average person. Too much is camera, yeah. Is, what is it? It is, is it too no, good? Not even is that. Is the quality too high? What, what's the problem? The iPhone um, is plenty. 
For it me. is. And and for somebody like me, uh, like it's so much overkill. It's amazing. But I, I don't need a camera that good. Mary Jo, if you didn't write about Microsoft, you, face it, you'd be an iPhone user. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> wow. Come on, admit it. No, really? Why no. not? I think I'd be, I probably would be an Android user. Really? Because most people in my family are Android users, I think, now. See, Apple should be scared if that's the case. Yeah. Well, yeah. isn't the, isn't the, I mean, I, what you want to be is the default choice. That's what win, made Windows so successful. It was the choice, the not. default. You know, I, I, uh, I, I hate to, I hate to agree with Apple's strategy. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that, but I, <laughs> you know, in the United States, things are a little skewed because in the United States, Apple in the smartphone market has an abnormally high usage and market share compared to the rest of the world. Um, I don't know if it's because it's it's home market or because we're just we like to spend money on things. I don't I don't I have no idea why, but that's just a fact. And so we tend to look at Apple like they're just generally very successful. But I think if you look at a lot of different important markets around the world, yeah. they are getting destroyed, you know, from a sales, a unit sales perspective by Android. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess also that's like having a device choice, right? Like yeah. I, I want to have a choice of form factors. Yeah. I mean, I look. You're not. You're just preaching the converted. But I'm just. <laughs> I notice, and maybe you. Know, I'm in the U.S. Right. Everybody has an iPhone. It's like the default choice. In well, the you're US. you're not just in the U.S. You're in Northern California near San right. Francisco too. I mean, okay. That's even. True. That's a bubble within a bubble. But even when I travel, <laughs> that does seem to be the default yeah. choice. I don't know. When I see, I just going around Boston, you know, on public transportation see a lot and of stuff. Androids. I absolutely say iPhones. Yeah. I see way more Android devices. Mm. I, that's that's absolutely. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more Android. It's shifted. Too. It's definitely shifting. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, anyway, it's but not as to whether that's concerning, I, I, you know, I don't think we we don't have a huge stake in the Apple thing. So uh, you know, Apple mm. uh, has tons of money and makes tons of money, and they're obviously going to be fine for a long time, and can mm -hmm. and can forge ahead with new markets if they want and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They're going to be fine. I, I'm. I think about it a lot because I frankly wonder why. It doesn't feel to me like. The yeah. iPhone is a great choice, but uh, my kids, right. that's, there wasn't, it's not even, uh, there's no number two. It's like iPhone. That's what we all have is iPhones. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the kids want anymore. You know, I, I don't I, know what they want. They want BBM. <laughs> they can't wait to get, <laughs> get a Chromebook and they want a Blackberry. They want a Blackberry and a Chromebook and that will be it's happy. The, both of those are the future. <laughs> Yeah. They both. What do they have in common, Leo? They both have keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. The kids love the keyboards because you know what they're doing. They're they're Snapchatting and they're. No, wait a minute. That's wrong. Um, I don't know. Isn't Snapchat all about chat? Is it? I don't even know what it is. It's in the name. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> I sent a naked picture of myself to Paul, and he never responded. <laughs> Oh, my kids loved it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> he hung it up next to the Christmas cards. Uh, Man. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. A, a bit of good news on the Lumia front. All, a little more good news, even. Uh, the Lumia 929, that rumored 5-inch phone on Verizon, uh, the icon for that just appeared in the Verizon store uh, just a few minutes ago. Hmm. So maybe icon? that hmm. is coming. <laughs> It's the 1080p display, 5-inch. That's the one um, you're waiting yeah. for, Mary Jo. That's the one I'm waiting for, the that's really a, that's thin gonna one. That's going to be a good one. It's going to be a thin one. Yay. Not yeah, a brick. This is not going to be the camera from bricks. the 1520, which is fantastic, <laughs> in a nice, thin Verizon. So where you said an icon appear. I mean, I'm looking at Verizon's store right now. Yeah. Where, I've where, seen uh, on uh, both The Verge and WM Power User, they say there is the Lumia icon has now appeared in the Verizon store with a 5-inch 1080p display, the Lumia. making people think, there it is. That's oh. 929. In the, in the online? I think you have to log in. Oh, um, the, the what is an icon, online. Mary Jo? Explain, please. <laughs> uh, it's Well, it's like a <laughs> render, and more like a render, an image. Um, you could see it's a five inch, like a big screen thing. It looks a lot like the um, 1520, that big screen phone that is on AT&T right now. It's big. It's a big screen. <laughs> right, let me shop phones and devices, smartphones. They should announce this at CES. Why aren't they announcing this? I know. I thought they were going to. Uh, I had heard some scuttlebutt, but maybe it'll be right after CES. 
<laughs> well, when I go there, all I see is iPhones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> iPhones, iPhones and more. See of the iPhones. Let's, uh, let's check the Windows phone box. It's like, hey, uh, welcome to Verizon. Can I help you with your iPhone order? I know. I keep getting postcards from Verizon here saying, "Don't you're up for an upgrade. Don't you want a new iPhone? No, <laughs> I don't. Uh, 928 Ativ Odyssey and the 8 a, 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 so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it has the words 929. I think there's just a, a render or a picture of it somewhere. Right. Um, Boy, those guys sorry. at The Verge is sharp eyes. <laughs> He's got sharp <laughs> eyes. Somebody tweeted it. Yeah, I, I'm sure someone sent it to him. Uh, big story, of course, always at CES. Ever since Ford announced, uh, it, you know, its new car, not at the Detroit Auto Show, about four, what it was, maybe five years ago now, but at CES, um, everybody there's there. It's uh, Audi, uh, BMW, Ford, Hyundai, everybody's there. Uh, and uh, one of the things Audi announced is uh, Android uh, on its next generation platform. In fact, there's even an, a, a standard that. Uh, other Ford uh, hardware uh, manufacturers. Isn't other car Audi part of Volkswagen? Yeah. So Volkswagen is not part of this alliance, and Volkswagen has deals with somebody else. I don't remember who. Uh, huh. Possibly. The Open remember. Automotive Alliance. And uh, some, much like the Open Handset Alliance, the idea being... Um, yeah. Basically well, the idea being Android we're going to pretend that Android is open. <laughs> yeah. So we'll put that right in the name. Yeah. <laughs> then and, uh, and uh, put it in every car. Yeah, well, they got some big backers, right? Some big car companies, but also some car companies that aren't involved, like the biggest in the world, for example, Toyota and and VW, which has to be number two. So they got uh, Audi, GM, Honda, and Hyundai. A lot of car solutions uh, this year. Apple hmm. announced that iOS in the car for last year. <coughs> Um, I don't believe there's a car you could buy in the United States that doesn't come with at least optional iPhone connectivity, but right. you know, whatever they're doing. The, you know, you want to do the in-dash thing. I, I have to say that the the biggest benefit to Android in a car would have to be in-dash Google Maps, right? I mean, I I have to think that would be very valuable to many, many people. I have that in my Audi already. Your Audi? I do. Um <laughs> When you take Lovey out for a drive. Lovey, look. <laughs> you can see what the little people yeah. are doing. It even has Street View. So right. it's really interesting. Even you don't even have to look at them when you drive by. Because they actually, take the out. It's nice. You can drive through those awful parts of I town. I don't have to look at them. I just can close my <laughs> I don't, eyes. I don't even see them. Um, it does the Google Earth for the nav. This is a paid yep. feature, by the way, because you have to have a T-Mobile okay. SIM in your car. Because so, it has to download this stuff in real time. Yep. So it does Google Earth for the nav. And when you want, you can zoom even farther and see Street View. It's weird to be driving somewhere and actually see the Street View of what you're driving through. It's very strange. It's only a matter of time before you can see um, your car in the Street View as you drive. We, they were talking <laughs> yeah. about that this morning on TNT. Is that so more and more what we're seeing is, is, is a move towards live view. And it's only a matter of time before. You can tell because if you're familiar with an area, you can see like there'll be construction. And you can yeah. say, well, it was that was two weeks ago or my uh, you know, my, if my house on street view is still being built and that was five years ago okay well it depends it, but you're they didn't drive down my little cul de sac. no it's a cul-de-sac yeah. i can't even believe the google street view car even went there they right. must have gone there and said what the hell <laughs> let's get out of here fast i've been meaning to check i i the google guys were driving by when i was walking this fall i could i should look around my neighborhood and see if um, in any of those street views yeah. I'll be the guy giving you the finger while I'm using a Windows phone. I think phone, it's but... great. I would moon him. Because <laughs> so, then, yeah, actually, just, it's funny. Just because in case there's any. Then they have to blur downs. out the moon. Uh, so it looks even worse. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We're going, what the hell is he doing? What am I looking at? There's a flesh-colored blob, but I don't get it. <laughs> what is that? Right. Don't make Mary Jo laugh. I'm just telling I you. Don't make me laugh. She'll I'll start, start coughing. coughing again. I know. <clears throat> Mary Jo... Respect, deep respect, right. <laughs> because I know exactly how you feel. And and let's not embarrass ourselves, Mary Jo, by laughing uncontrollably on a podcast. That would just <laughs> oh, let's not do that, please. Was that in the best? Horribly of? unprofessional. I just got to point out the Windows Weekly best of was like three hours long. I know. I know. Somebody told I know. me that. People, there was too much it. good stuff. <laughs> it was such a good year for Windows Weekly. Um. You, your headline is great. I, I presume Paul wrote this. 
Car tech. No one can win in the living room, so we're moving on. <laughs> How do you know right. he wrote that? We're, we're moving to the garage. It's just Paul's yeah. sense of humor, isn't it? It is. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, well, here's something we could win. But actually, I think the car thing is just as messy as the living room. I, I, I think this is going to work out to be all kinds of different stuff. And I don't know why it would be advantageous for a car maker, which wants to differentiate its products from other companies, to have the same thing that everyone else has. The real problem is that the car development cycle is so slow compared to the yeah. technology development cycle that you're always going to look behind. So, for instance, yeah, I have a T-Mobile SIM in my car, but it's 3G. They've right. only now just announced that they're going it's to the go 4G sim, you know, next the year. Right? Nano SIM. Yeah. And so, but that, but of course, because, and then there's also, and I think this is not insignificant, the very real issue of uh, hacking, that you don't want your car's sure. computer system to be reachable via, from the telematics computer system. So that means you got to have security or two systems or, it's a, it's, this is a non-trivial challenge. And, and who's been making all the money up to now? Microsoft with Microsoft Car. And QNX, that's the other one. It's a real-time operating yeah, system which is owned by... Which Nokia is using, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's owned by BlackBerry, of all people. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have to think that, for especially for younger people buying cars, although I bet fewer younger people are buying cars than ever before, but uh, that technology has to be a big part of that purchase, that going into this, there is an assumption that you will at least offer Bluetooth where I can connect to any type of phone. Right. And possibly a cable where I can get my, you know, music from the device or I can access my online services and, and have them play through the stereo or whatever. That has to be an absolute minimum for almost everybody these days, buying a new car. Yeah, I mean, this this Audi is 2014. It has a 30-pin connector for an iPhone. <laughs> you cannot, it moves yeah. too fast. Yeah. So there's a, you do it at your peril. Uh, Bluetooth is a good... I think you could stick with Bluetooth, although LE is going to change everything. And really, you should have LE in a car. And you can beacon as you... I beacon as you drive down the road. Here I am. Yeah, if you have a Windows phone, phone and you get in, a, in your car, it will say something like, we have turned on driving mode. Yeah. And every time this happens, everyone in my vehicle, whoever it is, thinks that my car said that. <laughs> and that is the most impressive thing they've ever heard. Hello, Paul. <laughs> It's like, no, my car is technologically disadvantaged. That was my phone. But see, that was a smart move Ford made. They said, look, we can never keep up. So what we're going to do is have an interface to the phone and let the phone do all of it, bring in the connectivity, have the apps. They can update that. So we're going to make an API. That was, I think, very it's smart. Because when it comes to car safety, what you want is a person staring into their tiny <laughs> iPhone screen looking for the right track. Hello, Paul. While they're driving around. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know one where thing is that, that folder about, icon? <laughs> why did Microsoft not have anything to say this CES you know, about cars? They they were every the one. Every year they have a ton. They were the one. They've had a Microsoft automotive thing every year for 10 you years. You know why? They've I changed think they're losing like market share. Times. They're losing market share rapidly. Yeah. Isn't it? It's crazy. I, I just thought it was very strange because every year I'm so inundated with all the Windows automotive press releases from them and i didn't hear a piece year, nothing yeah interesting i, I looked them I'm up because i wasn't Michael. sure no, the obviously we don't. <laughs> i'm sorry kia, they announced something with kia last year so kia does something kia isn't yeah. that a big but, name but i and i i guess i think i just off the top of my head but i think fiat and possibly nissan are the two other companies that it partners with <laughs> I think the whole... Are you all right, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> Leo, you look like... This is like a look that I expect from my children and or my pets. Why? When they have done something wrong <laughs> and they're trying to pretend that nothing happened. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, Alan Mulally isn't going to do it either. He's finally... Uh, what do you call it? Got off the pot, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> the board, the Ford board, we talked about, you talked about four weeks ago, has been begging Alan Mulally to say, to end the speculation that he would be the CEO at Microsoft. And unaccountably, Mulally has stayed silent. Finally, he says, I'm staying at Ford. Bastard. <laughs> that bastard. Now, I don't know if this is worth parsing his exact words or not. It wasn't exactly definitive. Right. He's going to stay at Ford 
at least through 2014. Well, now we know Microsoft's looking for a CEO this year, so that means he won't be taking the job this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it means in the future. It also doesn't mean he won't take the chairman's job ah, if that becomes Ah, you're <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a lot of speculation that nobody's going to want the CEO job if they've got Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates on the board breathing down their necks. That is so much crap. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mary Jo disagrees. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. When I saw that story, I, okay, think about this. If who, Are you going to apply or be talking to Microsoft about the CEO job if you don't want to work with Bill and Steve? They've set up this whole company. They're on the board for at least another year. Um, they, they are the ones who put the reorg in motion. This is their company pretty much, right? Uh, if you don't agree with these policies they put in place, why are you even talking to them? Go be a CEO somewhere else, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't know. That's I just, I just think point. that's that is a really weird argument. It, um, there's there's other jobs out there if you if you don't like the way Microsoft is structured, and I don't see why you would come in and try to change everything if knowing you're going to face a lot of uphill battle and you're going to face a lot of um, problems with Bill and Steve. I don't I don't know that whole. It just felt like very circular reasoning to me when I read that article. This I, is the, I think it's more the Wall, Wall Street, Street doesn't Journal, want Wall Street Journal. Right. Wall Street article. doesn't want Bill and Steve on the board. Some people on the street don't want him on the board. Yeah, right. Not so yeah. sure about the candidates. <laughs> uh, directors on this is from the Wall Street Journal article. Uh, Shira Oveed, Spencer Ante, and Joanna uh, Joanne Lublin writing. Uh, wait a minute, though. This is really old. This is from October. There must be another. One, yeah, there's. Recently. they have a new one uh, that they did over the holidays, yeah. the journal did. Um, I guess saying, they got yeah, pretty close, they, right? December? Yeah. December. And maybe that's when the Alan Mulally thing happened. I mean, maybe that was the timing of it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people saying, Al, and because, like they're putting two and two together, saying the Wall Street Journal said nobody wants this job uh, because of Bill and Steve. And that's why Alan Mulally decided to say no. What? No yeah. I, I, I love that, yes. There's any right. causation here. <laughs> False syllogism. I yes. declare. It's, yeah, one made up statement, you know, and then telephone game occurs. Right. I, I mean, the most it. believable thing I saw about Mullally, I forget whose story this was, said next week the Detroit Auto Show, I think, kicks off. So he wanted to make sure this question didn't keep coming up over and over and over. Well, I should say Ford wanted to make sure this didn't keep coming up, right? Right. So they said, well, that's to him, what Look, some, somebody time. was quoted saying, right? They don't right. ask it's us time. about the Mustang. They don't ask <laughs> us about earnings. They right. ask us what he's doing. Yeah. You know, and, and that's next kind week, of a that tough would be the story. only thing anybody would want to talk about, right? So uh, this is also from uh, Shira Ovid and uh, Joanne Lublin. They write, um, John Thompson says, who's of course leading the search and is on the board. Says oh, the board the is methodically seeking the right person for a complex role, but corporate directors, management consultants, and some executives contacted, none of whom apparently work at Microsoft, about the job say the potential for boardroom clashes at Microsoft is a turnoff. So, I'll halt that right there. There's a quote there. It says, "No CEO worthy of the title wants blah blah blah." From Jean-Louis Gasset. <laughs> exactly. All right. I think I think we need a statute of limitations on people who haven't worked at Apple in 20 years, haven't run a company that amounted to anything ever, and has nothing to do with this topic. But Why basically, he's talking guy? about John Scully, Steve Jobs. Why would you quote this guy? <laughs> well, he does write the Monday Note, which mon which is a pretty good uh, Ugh, analytic blog. But you're right. He's kind of been out of it for a while. That, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, former like Apple executive. Of one of the authors, you know, like, I, this is, that's, it's like nepotism. Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> I quote John Louis all the time. <laughs> right. He has a very good, well, he has a too, very good, the Monday Note blog is a very good, uh, but you're I used right, to, he not. used to, um, back when B was still a thing, he wrote a blog, you know, so this would have been like the late, yeah, mid nineties, I don't even know, a long time ago. I used to find it very interesting, yeah. but like 20 years ago. Might point out that as as they do in this article that Alan Mulally, CEO of Ford, has Bill Ford Jr. looking over his shoulder. Yeah, you know, that's the it's always been that way. Although it was Bill who brought him in, who said, "You know right. what? We got to go outside the family this time." I 
I'm pretty sure Alan Mulally can do whatever he wants at Ford these days. <laughs> I, I think mean, so. <laughs> and now that he's going to stay for at least 2014. They're going to come out with the Ford Mulally mobile. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So uh, do we want it? Do we care? I mean, what do we... Who, the list narrows. Yeah. It's basically what we've said all along. Elop, Bates, Nadella. Nadella. And, but we don't know who on the outside, and I'm sure there are other outside candidates. Um, I, we know it. Huh? No, I'm Paul Moritz. Paul Moritz, already, who used to work at Microsoft as one of the big bosses back in the 90s and 2000s, right. um, he has said he feels he's too old and he's out. So we know he's not in the running. But we don't even Is know. Is he older than Mulally? Gates and Bomber? Sorry? Is Moritz older? older than Gates and Bomber? No, he's about their age. So this is what mid to late fifties. Yeah, yeah. It's a pr it's you, the prime you, of your life. I'd like to point out. It's when yeah, you, 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 <laughs> yes. And why do you say that, Leo? It's when you're most <laughs> vigorous. <laughs> is it really? Well, I have something to look forward to because you, right now I feel like like I'm on death's doorstep. <laughs> so you're saying that in ten years it's going to get better. Let me tell you, fifty-seven's the new thirty-seven, my friend. I'm so glad You've got to hear the that. knowledge, it's, the it's wisdom. So contrary to. And thanks to My medical science, far. you've got all the <laughs> spunk of a 25-year-old. Yeah. Excellent. I need that. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> After this cold, I was just lying in bed going, kill me, take me now. Yeah, just take, take me. Take me now, Lord. <laughs> right. Exactly. I've done all I want to do. Just put me out of my misery. <laughs> Fortunately, God has stopped listening to me a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So even if Balmer and Gates left the board, guess who the number one and number two shareholders at Microsoft would be? Yeah, right. yep. Although shifting <laughs> positions a little bit, according to this story from Mary Jo Foley, Steve Balmer may well be the number one shareholder of Microsoft this year. I know. This is kind of a crazy one because uh, I, I think it's kind of defies what a lot of people just assume, you know. Uh, Gates has been the largest shareholder for quite a while, if not always. The largest independent shareholder, I should say. There, are, there are larger institutional shareholders? Yeah, there are, ah, yeah. Interesting. Uh, but Gates owns about, right now, 4.5% um, of Microsoft shares. Balmer owns four. Gates is selling them off at about 20, 20 million shares a quarter, I wow. believe. Um, that's for, that's to fund his foundation. Right, and and he's he said he wants to basically sell off, well, not sell off, give away all his money by the time he dies. All but um, all but we'll like see. a billion or something. He's gonna right, just a little for his kids. Leave to, <laughs> yeah. to, to junior. <laughs> right, but yeah, so but Balmer, uh, this is actually a uh, computer world story. They did the math. They went back, looked at all the SEC filings, and they said if things stay on the course they're on right now. Balmer is going to be the biggest independent Microsoft shareholder as of mid-2014, very soon. He told you he treasures his Microsoft stock. He does. I treasure right. it. It's my so retirement. So all these people saying, kick him off the board. You don't want him on the board. Uh, he's not going to go, guys. He's He is proud to be a big shareholder, and he wants a say. Well, I mean, admittedly, the board has a say four times a year, but sure. They do. A number one shareholder has some input. He has some input. <laughs> Yes. Especially if he's Welcome formerly... Welcome to attend that shareholders meeting. They have <laughs> yeah. uh, the audience and stand in line at a microphone and possibly hello. ask a question. My, my name is Steve Ballmer. I'm retired. <laughs> Sorry, um, I have a question up, sir, for the really board. <laughs> is there any corn? <laughs> <laughs> the, the lunch today, will it have... Well, the, decidedly well, not standard, not substandard. <laughs> Man, uh, oh, it's such an image. Um, I'm sorry, I'm amusing mostly myself at this point. Uh, Surface update, oh, Rama, and the battle of the consoles coming up. Also, Mary Jo's beer of the week, code name of the week, enterprise pick of the week, Paul's tip and software. There's a lot more. To come on Windows Weekly. Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. We love these guys. They came by uh, the studio. Now it's been a couple of months um, to show us what they were up to. They were very inspired, apparently, by the screensavers. If you go uh, to their website, itpro.tv slash ww, uh, and take a look at the videos there, you'll see immediately these guys, this looks this looks like the screensavers. This looks like, in fact, 
uh, very much influenced by what we're doing here at the Brick House. They have the same mics, the same cameras, the same switcher. But instead of uh, the kind of general programming we do, they focus on one thing, getting you trained, getting you the certs that you need to become an IT professional, whether it's the uh, Cisco or the CompTIA, the Microsoft certs. They're dedicated to giving you entertaining, informative programming to help you get certified. How about that? They tell stories, they share experiences, they engage you. That makes it easier to remember the content than any study guide or class. There are hundreds of hours of content, 20 hours added each week. And what I really love is you can watch live, very much like us. They have a chat room so you can ask questions. If you watch live... Uh, you know, uh, you can get in there and you can say, well, okay, well, show me this or explain this. You get one low monthly rate with uh, all access membership, constant updates. This is cheaper than going to an IT boot camp. There's an easy, no hassle cancellation, of course. In fact, once you get that great job, you can cancel. Although I think a lot of people keep watching because they learn. They're learning. This is great even for IT pros. It's IT Pro TV. So, in fact, they even organize the, uh, the library via exam objectives. So you can say, I need to study, you know, part three, questions eight through 24, and you can find that. They also have a Roku channel, so you can watch on your big screen TV. I know a lot of people keep IT Pro TV running all the time because it's just you soak it in. I want you to try it right now. Let's see, are they live now? When they're they're like us when they're not um, when they're not live they do uh, pre-records. Let's just watch a little bit here. We set the time, and as soon as I set the time, I got a nice little message oh, letting me know that it was set. Yeah. And look what it says: oh. it set it, and it set it for two fourteen oh, UTC. UTC. Or, or that's what time it was. Now oh. it's sixteen sixteen UTC. Ah. UTC is the universal time code. Uh, it's also called Zulu time, Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah. I love these guys, and I think that they really bring it alive. I want you I'm to take a look at it right now. The Here's the deal we're going to do for you. If you go to itpro.tv slash ww, browse around. You could check it out. Upgrade your brain with the most popular certifications all employers recognize. Check out the free preview. Normally, the subscriptions, I think, are very affordable. $57 a month, $570 if you get a whole year. But as fans of Twit, they've offered us a special deal. If you use our offer code WW50, Windows Weekly, WW50, you'll get 50% off your subscription for the life of your account. $28.50 a month, $285 for the year. And it's a great deal. That's cheaper than a one of those books, uh, two months worth. It's worth one book. I and you much, much more informative. IT Pro, ITPRO.tv slash WW. Don't forget the offer code WW50. No, no, no. Then it's, it's more than setting the clock. Somebody said, <laughs> setting the clock. I know how to do that. And so now my clock is wrong. Right. So we'll, we'll fix that in a They're second. talking about getting the uh, system the clock correct as a key part. Summer dash time. EDT. You, you got to set your servers up. This is all stuff you need to know in the test. Believe me. ITPro.tv. And yes, you will know how to set your clock via the command line. <laughs> like a real man. Like a real IT professional. All right. Leo Laporte, Paul Therott, Mary Joe Foley. We've had our break. It's time to continue on with Windows Weekly and an uh, update Orama <laughs> on one surface. Who wants to take this one? Is this you, Paul? All right. How about Mary Jo does the first one and I'll do the second. All right, fair enough. All right. Yep. So we we talked on the show recently about a problem that some of the Surface Two users were having uh, with the BitLocker key. Remember this, Leo? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when they were putting their machine into sleep or, or powering down and powering back up, they were being asked for their BitLocker key. They had right. to enter that to right. get back into their machine. And you could get that. Gave you a nice, convenient link right to the <laughs> SkyDrive site. Yeah. With all those numbers. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. So now they fix that. And this week they issued a fix for the BitLocker recovery key problem. Uh, it's available to you via Windows Update. Uh, the one that we're still missing, though, is the patch for the Surface Pro 2, which uh, when Microsoft issued their December firmware updates, 
the one that was out for the Surface Pro 2 ended up killing battery life for a number of customers in a very, very severe way. Some people couldn't even boot at all. Uh, some were getting two hours of battery life after applying the update. Microsoft ended up pulling it from the, from uh, Windows Update because it was such a disaster. They said uh, that they were going to try to get it done as soon as possible, a, re a replacement patch or a replacement uh, firmware update. Uh, initially, they said it was going to be after the holidays, and they said, no, we're going to work through the holidays and get it out. So now it sounds like maybe next week as part of Patch Tuesday, you might see that, uh, the one for the Surface Pro 2. So... There are two different updates. The BitLocker recovery key is for Surface 2. That's the ARM-based new Surface. The one that's the botched Microsoft firmware update is for the Surface Pro 2 based on Intel. And that one is probably not till next week, sadly. All right. Uh, and Paul, you had anything to add there? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a show title. <laughs> eh. Eh. I think she covered it pretty well. Eh, she right? said it all. Well, let's go to the battle of the consoles. I know that's a big Mary Jo Foley story. That is. I, I'm ready for that one. <laughs> In the fact, Hadoop it's not. Console. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Can I just let me say I love Hyper V? I'm just saying. I knew um, you did. Mm. So, Microsoft, I saw just now on the page, says 3 million sold on the Xbox One. Sony yeah. says two four point two million. <laughs> right. Damn, they're winning the horse race. Yeah, they are, and they aren't. You know, I, I, I made this observation earlier when they had uh, provided uh, earlier numbers, and I looked at this now, and I, you know, the Xbox One is available in far fewer markets, um, and they had made that decision earlier on. Remember, sometime between E three and the fall, they, they cut the number of markets they were going to launch to pretty dramatically. Um, and Sony did not. And so I, I actually questioned this number, but apparently they're available in 53 different markets right now. Uh, the, P the PS4 is compared to 13 for Xbox One. Well, that makes a big so, difference, right? That makes a difference. Um, they've been on sale a little bit longer. Um, and of course, their device costs $100 less. And I think that makes a big difference. We, we all know. You know I what, think what when Halo is. comes out, and they've promised us Halo this year, yeah, everything's going to change. I think things are even out this year big time. I think when I look over this year, I see uh, Microsoft with a better overall strategy with around entertainment and all that. And I see them having a better exclusive game library, you know, that their uh, console exclusives are. are that it's but it's going we'll, to, we'll you know, is, as much as the uh, Xbox One is a media center, love it as a media center. Ultimately, games are what sells these things. And you, yeah, and, and there, there are no amazing games. And no. actually, I have to say, that makes these figures pretty impressive because these launches were bigger than any launch these companies had ever had. Um, I, I went and tried to figure out if this was bigger than the Wii launch. I mean, the, the Wii was the biggest thing ever. Um, it's, it, it's a console that has sold over 100 million units over the course of its life and was unavailable. I, I want to say for the first 15 months, I mean, you basically just couldn't get it. It was... Yeah. constantly sold out. Um, but I'm not positive they sold, you know, three or four million units in the first month and a half or whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, if they didn't, it was probably just because of constrained supply. But this is a pretty strong launch, I mean, for a market that I've uh, often described as being dead. <laughs> so, um, you know, we'll see how this year goes. But I, I think that the release of games like Titanfall, the Tom Clancy game we've been talking about, Halo 5, all that stuff is going to be a big deal for uh, uh, as uh, one of our uh, chat room folks does point out, as far as international goes, that uh, neither PS4 or Xbox One is available in Japan yet, and that is a, I would <laughs> guess, a traditional Sony market. So, yep, right. Opening but, that market uh, if, helps. If Xbox One was available in forty more markets, uh, <laughs> bringing yeah, it on right. par with the uh, PS4, I think that would make a much right. bigger difference than just. Japan. And you know, it's not even. It's not even. I. Who cares? Three million, four million. I don't, you know. Well, Leo, is I that care. important? You care, okay? <laughs> so, um, I, I, I guess you have to, you have to have the units out there for game developers to say. Yeah. But look, ever you're going to develop for the Xbox One. You're not going to. I don't that. think any anyone, you know, if you're a uh, 
Electronic Arts or Activision or whatever, and you're making some high-profile shooter game, you're going to be in both these consoles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, unless you strike some kind of crazy deal. But. Now, I do wonder what the Steam box, and we're seeing, I think, 13 or 14 manufacturers, PC manufacturers, yeah. step up saying, yeah, we're going to do one, everything from, a, you know, a $5,000 yeah, Alienware. You know, I'm not really sure that's ever going to amount to anything. Um, and again... It, that's going to hinge on a lot of different things, but one of the bigger ones is going to be the game library availability. Yeah, because it's not is, Windows. It's a it's not Windows Steam. It's it's Linux. very it's a Linux thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it will happen. I, I I think Steam has done a decent job of porting games to the Mac, for example, and uh, I, I'm sure the game library will be there. But you know, the Steam stuff, I just don't. It, it's to me, this is just too complex. I think that the Xbox and the PlayStation kind of satisfy this need. And that if there are other needs for, you know, video gaming, they're met by such things as portable devices, phones, tablets, the Wii U, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not, this is already a pretty crowded market. I'm not really clear what the, the point of that is um, beyond the fact that they want to expand their business. Yeah. Well, you know, I, they can't put Steam on Xbox. Right. They can't. It is on PS4 or three. Is it really? Four. Yeah, that's interesting. But not, but not PS4. I don't think. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Let's get to, as long as you're here. Let's get <laughs> is Mary Joe bowed out? Uh, I turned her mic off in case you wanted to hack. Oh, gargling is good. She's just walking around the block. You know, they're talking about Xbox again. I don't know how this happened. It disappeared. I'm out of here. <laughs> so uh, let, let us talk about uh, Xbox, <laughs> as it turns out. Your tip it's of the week, of a... which is, yeah. Actually, Xbox related. Xbox. Sorry. So go ahead. Go ahead, Mary Jo. Take another walk. All right. <laughs> One of the things I, I've been very eager to test with the Xbox One is game sharing. Um, game sharing with a disc-based game works exactly as you'd expect. In fact, I, it's one of those things you, I've been using an Xbox for years and I don't really think about this stuff too much, but were I to buy a game and it's, you know, 60 bucks in a store and I bring it home and I play it on my Xbox, if my son wants to play that game, I hand him the disc and he goes. There's no copy protection that prevents that, right? You can, he needs the disc, but, you know, it, it's simple enough. When you have digitally available games as we do now on the 360 as well and from day one on the xbox one you know things are a little more interesting and microsoft had talked about having a family sharing plan which they dropped because everybody complained so much about drm and whatever other nonsense ruined the xbox one but whatever but they they still have some kind of game sharing functionality so game sharing on a single console is easy enough to understand you install a game that you've downloaded from the store it works um, Paul, we're just going to have to end the show right now. I've just received yep. my Mac Pro. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Comes Do not in. open that box during the show. <laughs> I will fly out there. Just a trash can. <laughs> just a very fancy trash can. Trash can. Mary Jo, you, did you turn yourself down? Because you're a little quiet. She so probably coughed into the microphone and it I ruined the... Did. Yeah, and it went... I can't go on. Better now. You're not better. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Ed, W-A-6-A-X-X, -X, for sending me this little puppy. We'll do an unboxing after the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> what were anyway. you saying, Paul? Your, what was I your, saying? Your, uh, so, on, on a single console, yes. it's, which I think is the most common scenario. That's what we wanted to do, to. because we were playing with Anthony's, uh, in, during our New Year's Eve show. We were playing with... Yeah. Some I can't remember somebody's Xbox One, and I wanted he to. Bought it. You signed in. I wanted, it still worked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that works fine. Yeah. Now, if I though, own a game, when, what if there are two consoles? Oh, right. Ew. Um. You know, my son got an Xbox One for Christmas. Yeah. Or, I'm gonna. You know, I I I'm I'm a teenager, not really, but if I was a teenager, my friend had an Xbox One, and we wanted to do some kind of and, a game. And that's it. very common. That's kind of how does that well, you do yeah. that? You you have buddies. actually, as it turns out, it works really well. But yeah. there's a trick to it because the Xbox One has this notion of home Xbox. You know that 
obviously the Xbox I use is my home Xbox. And the other ones I use are other Xboxes. They're right. not my home right. Xbox. Right. And so if I install games on someone else's Xbox, for, for them to use that game, they would have to sign in as me. So if I come here and I start playing a game, they, they would get signed out because, you know, I'm me and I'm signed in. But if you want to share within a house, actually, there's a pretty simple way to do it, assuming you only have two Xboxes, which is I sign into my son's console and I assign that to be the home Xbox. Oh. He signs into my console and he makes that his home Xbox. And what that means is I can now play his games on my console without him having to sign in and vice versa. And it's a very simple system because anytime I sit down in front of the Xbox, of course, I'm going to sign in anyway. But once you've established that the Xbox is your home Xbox, yeah. among other things, you can share any of your games with anyone who uses that console. And so it's kind of a neat little trick um, if you want to share games between two consoles in your house. Uh, just make the one you don't use normally, the home Xbox. And then there'll be no signing in, Salinas. It just works fine. Awesome. Yeah, kind of a cool thing. Very cool. Uh, let's see here. Your software pick of the week. Yeah, so I, I'm probably one of three people in the world that uses Xbox Music, but I, I really like it, and I, it's improved dramatically this past year. They've added support for multiple platforms. It's on Xbox One, it's on iOS, it's on Android, it's on the web, you know, it's everywhere. The problem is that the mobile uh, clients that they put out so far aren't, you know, full or haven't been full featured. So iOS and Android up until today, you could stream online, but you couldn't do downloading and play things offline like you could on Windows. And uh, the version, they added a, a Xbox Music 2 uh, came out today for iOS, and they've added the ability to finally to download from the app. And so you have to have a, an Xbox Music Pass subscription to do that. Um, but you can now download music uh, to your iPhone or your iPod Touch or an, an iPad, although it's only in a, it's like a, uh, it's a phone app. It's not the full-size tablet app. Um, the weird part about it is it's only for playlists. So you can, you can make a playlist available offline, which obviously downloads those songs, but you can't go in and arbitrarily download an album or a song or some selection of songs. You can't uh, download anything else. It's just playlists. And so obviously there were workarounds there, but you know, you could make, you could easily copy an album into a new playlist or whatever, but I'm not really sure why they did that. I mean, this is one of those things when they, when, whenever they released this app last fall, they said, we are going to be adding offline support, kind of expected it by the end of last year. And so now it's here, but it's only, it's only for playlists. And I don't quite understand why that is, but it works pretty well. It, it works fine. I inadvertently made my iPhone one of my Xbox managed devices somehow uh, just by installing the app, but um, that means I can now download music to it. So I, seeing that I had done that, I started to download some music just to test it. And it works, you know, as you would expect. So That's exciting. Yeah, kind of a neat expansion of Xbox music. Yay. Uh, that's nice. And it just shows, uh, I, you know, I think it's important in a way because Microsoft says we don't, uh, we don't want to deprecate iOS Right. You know, it kind of answers the, the people who say, well, they're never going to put their best stuff on iOS. Uh, we'll see. You know, I, I obviously an Android version is going to have to, you know, will that allows offline will have to happen. There's a Windows phone version in the works that is in an app preview mode right now, which is you know, lackluster in some ways. But we'll see how that evolves. But I wouldn't be surprised if the next few months uh, saw some big advances on the mobile app. So this is the first one. It's uh, certainly overdue. So glad to see it. Yay. Well, let's see, Mary Jo. I think you're up now with your Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes. Uh, my Enterprise Pick of the Week is Microsoft's very first acquisition of 2014. Already? Already. Wow. They bought a company this week named Parature, P-A-R-A-T-U-R-E. Parature was a Microsoft partner, a reseller partner, they do external facing CRM, so things like help desk and out, out external agent kinds of uh, functionality. And Microsoft's going to take their technology and fold that back into their own dynamic CRM products so that it'll be integrated with both dynamic CRM online and dynamic CRM on prem. Uh, that integration is probably going to take a while. When Microsoft's bought other Dynamics-related acquisitions, it's usually taken them six months to a year to actually get it 
tightly integrated in with Dynamics. But this is very significant because Microsoft has had a lot of pieces of, of their CRM solutions that are internal facing, but they've been lacking the external facing solution that some of their competitors like Salesforce and Oracle have had. So this now gives them a much more complete kind of a CRM offering, uh, and it should help them when they're going head to head against their competitors. We don't know how much they paid. They didn't say, but the rumored price was $100 million. Uh, and they are supposedly going to also take on 100 new employees who currently work in Herndon, Virginia, for Paratrip. Hmm. Herndon. That's like, Herndon. Uh, that's near AOL and... Uh, NSA. The NSA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, oh, customer <laughs> service, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, with extreme <laughs> prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of customer service. <laughs> I served the customer. I'm going to come down here and take care of this problem myself. <laughs> Where did you say you lived? Isn't that an Arnold Schwarzenegger line? You've been served. <laughs> <laughs> Should be. You, next one. They'll be, they'll be in there. One. Uh, your code name pick of the week. Code name pick of the week is Normandy. And the reason I made this the pick this week is because we've been talking a lot about Android on on uh, Windows devices and on top of Windows. Well, it, Normandy is the code name for this phone that some of you may have heard of that Nokia has built that runs Android. This A lot of people were thinking, oh, this is just a hypothetical thing. There actually is a phone that out there, a phone design where it's... Android, uh, the open source project version of Android tailored for a Nokia phone. Uh, and we've got the screenshots from Ev Leaks, who is a master leaker. He's, of he all. seems to be pretty right on every time. He's right? usually very right on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think these look very believable, these images he or they she show. Could be Evelyn. Yes, could be a he or a she. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the, the very interesting uh, how Microsoft's taking away some of the capacitive buttons hmm. supposedly or i should say nokia is because nokia is still not yet part of microsoft officially but yeah when you see these designs it, it, it's possibly part of the strategy towards having more generic hardware that could run either just android just windows phone some combination some dual boot thing we don't know but the this makes it look like microsoft well i should again sorry i shouldn't say microsoft I should say nokia has been thinking through what would it look like if you had Android on a low-end phone, uh, almost like an entry-level phone, even lower than things like the 520, a way for customers who are maybe on the Asha line of phones now to kind of have a, a conduit into the Lumia family. Do you think the, the choice of code name is uh, significant? After all, as, as Paul and I, as <laughs> World War II aficionados, might right? note that that was Normandy Beach was the place D-Day right. began, the invasion. Mm -hmm. And maybe this could is be. Nokia's invasion into Android territory. Yep. I don't know. It very, very much could be. Yeah. I, I've never heard a theory why it's Normandy, but that's the code name. Well, you're going to watch carefully for other beach names like Omaha. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We will. Interesting. And Mavericks, of course. Right. <laughs> Mavericks, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Germans in Santa taken. Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, your beer of. Well, wait a minute. Do we want to do beer or. Uh, yeah, your beer of the week. Yeah. You got two. I'm doing a beer of the things. week and then an app, yeah. a, a beer app. So okay. the beer of the week is. Uh, I may not be pronouncing this correctly, but a Goose Tilquin. It's a Belgian lambic slash sour beer. Goose term as well. Yes. I should Goose get our. A, yeah. uh, we have a Belgian in house for just these purposes. Do you? Very yeah. good. I should get Frederic over here. Goose. How do you pronounce that, Frederic? Ud, ud Goose til It's pronounced Rankle. Rankle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so it's old Goose. I don't know what it is. What is it? Right. <laughs> so they what they do is they take lambic beers, which are sours, and they combine various ones and create this unified beer uh, out Is of these a, various lambics. It's a lambic. blend? It's a blend. Interesting. And it cut, it's very dry and it's nice. It's got a nice sour. A, a lot of people have said to me, what's a good entry level sour? If you don't like sweet beers. Come here, like Frederick. Frederick is going to now read oh, good. this good. name for us. Frederick, what, how do you pronounce that? Oudegeuse. Oudegeuse. Tilquin à l'ancienne. 
Oh, it's so so sexy. Oh, thank you. Does she do the uh, voiceover on the Paris Metro? (laughs) 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 Thank you. That's good. I don't know what she said, but I just got a chill when she said it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's very good though. If you if you've been wanting to try a sour. Yeah. And you've been a little afraid. I'd say this would be a really great beer if you can find it at Whole Foods or somewhere. Because uh, I've seen it around in bottles. It's a, it's a good entry level one to give a shot. Uh, I also have a beer app of the week. Uh, this just came out for Windows Phone this week. It's called Beard. Not B-E-E. not B E A R D. No, B E E R D. Like beer me. It's, I've been beard. Called- Exactly. I've been beard. And if you're somebody like me who goes to stores and is always using your search button to look up beers, like what do people think of this beer? What kind of beer is this? Uh, This gives you a giant database of beers already plugged in and you can see the style and the alcohol content, whether it's organic. Uh, It's also linked in with untapped. So you can see this have have like a social feed in there so that you can if you want to rank beers or rate beers or add in beers, do all that. Uh, I've been using it and it's really good because it's saving me a lot of time when I'm trying to do beer research, which is very important for this show. <laughs> oh, it is, is it? <laughs> it is. So 99 cents. I, you know, <laughs> there's a trial version and the full version is 99 cents. It's a very good good app. Well, I like it I just want to thank you for doing that hard work and research. I know. Somebody has to do it. Why don't you have a beer blog? I've thought about it. Yeah. Maybe one day. Yeah. Mary I can Jovi, think of an uh, angle. I can have my companion sushi blog. <laughs> I know. That'd be cool. Are you? I didn't know this, Paul. You're a sushi aficionado? I am. Oh. Hey, next New Year, will you come on and make sushi with us? I will. Do you, do you have <laughs> like the, do you have a roller and do the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, we don't do rolls, but we make sushi here. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Sure. You do the ice cream roll or... No, we don't. We just no do rolls uh, at all. Like Gary style, you know, uh, on Nickery. rice. Oh, yum, yum. Yeah. I think we found another segment for next year. I know. That would be fun. Oh, we'll have beer with Mary Jo, sushi with Paul. <laughs> this is going to get, this is going to get good. <laughs> Paul Therach, Mary Jo freezing your fish. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> you guys are great. So nice. Thanks uh, to, uh, both of you for allowing us to move the time. Now, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. for Windows Weekly. That's 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1900 UTC. Uh, if you want to watch live, and I do encourage you to watch live. It helps us. We can. We are always looking at the chat room and listening to what you say and all of that stuff. So always come in live if you can. But if not, on-demand audio and video, always available after the fact at twit.tv slash ww. Uh, or wherever you subscribe to podcasts, including, of course, Windows Phone. Saw Rob Greenlee of Microsoft uh, Monday uh, and thanked him again for the unparalleled support for podcasting in Windows Phone uh, compared to every other phone platform. It's the only one that has podcasts right there. Right? That's true. I'm not I'm not mistaken. Well, uh, yeah, r- yeah, built right in. Yeah, yeah yep. built right in. So we love that. And I think we can credit Rob with that. Paul Therat is at the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com. He's also the author of the Windows Music Book, windowsmusicbook.com, Windows Phone Book. Xbox Windows Music. Phone, I'm sorry, xboxmusic.com. <laughs> Windows Phone Book, windowsphonebook.com. And, uh, well, you find it all at uh, yeah, it's Super Site, winsupersite.com. Mary Jo Foley writes about beer and Microsoft at All About Microsoft. No, she doesn't write about beer, but maybe someday. <laughs> All about Microsoft.com. I hope you feel better, Mary Jo. Sincerely, uh, thank you. Because I know this is not the first thing on your list you'd like to be doing. You probably want to be curled up in bed right now. Sorry if I coughed a lot on the I didn't know. We didn't hear <laughs> one cough. I coughed more than you did. Yeah. So nice job. You, you hit it well like a pro. Thank you, everybody. And we'll be back here next week on Windows Weekly. 